the audition for Swagger came in from any other way, you know, auditioning from my agencies. And I originally went in for a different role and I went through the extensive process of training and auditioning process, the rigorous audition process with that until the very end, last minute, I got handed a different role and I'm pretty sure they created this one last minute, another character from Kevin Durant's life. And they had me read for it and it kind of stuck. And then I pre began a secondary audition process with that one, but that was a little quicker because they, I think they already knew they wanted me for that role. But um, I'm so, couldn't be happier with the turnout. I love Royale, that's my brother, it's me. I love <laughs> Acting is actually something I kind of stumbled into. I was mainly a musician. I did rapping, I sing. I still do all that. You know, music was a passion of mine since a very young age, but I stumbled into acting around 15. It was kind of just presented in front of me and took the leap of faith. It's been really amazing. You know, this has been my family for the last four years or so, because season one, you know, started around COVID time. And unfortunately we had a, a little setbacks where we weren't able to finish up as soon as we'd like, but this has been my family for the longest. And every day on set with these people is magic. It is hilarious. It is funny of beat where they're with, from, I see them from the start of the day to the end of the day. And the only people we hang out with. So it's just been really amazing getting to work with all these amazing people. Character dynamic has more or less, I ain't trying to give too much away, but it's been a little, we've grown above it because Royale by end of season one has already proven himself. He's more than just a rich kid or more than just a bench warmer. He's here because he has something to offer and bring to the table. His basketball intelligence and, and everything Royale is, is more than just what he was labeled as in the beginning, which we got to the base of the end of season one. So season two, you know, y'all about to see a whole lot of different changes. We up Royale up on his game a little more and Royale is just, he's doing a lot better. That character with, you know, having dyslexia wasn't too hard of a reach for me to play because I also have dyslexia. Like that was something I learned later in life as well. Like around maybe a little middle of high school when I was moving on to online school, but that's uh, different. But um, this is someone I was actually happy to play because we have this in common, you know what I mean? Something I could definitely look into Royale's perspective and see how he sees things on the outside or how he's probably not as quick as the other kids in this specific area of field, like for Royale is basketball. But for me, it was like in the classroom and definitely wanted to, and what I'm pretty sure we were able to put out for a lot of other kids that, have, that happen to have it, to kind of speak up. You know, because at this time when I had, I was assuming I was just not as quick as the other kids. I was slow, I was this, I was just always assuming I just wasn't bet, like good enough or, you, you know, and this leads, and nobody's really gonna speak up on it. I'm just, I had to swallow that and keep pushing on with my life. But until later, when I spoke up about it, got me the right help, was able to graduate, was able to understand better. And it's something that you can't live with. It almost turns into a superpower because even today I use, certain forms of dyslexia with the mem as far as memorization that's what i use for my lines until today so it's like i don't even see it as a hindering or, or something that's stopping me or slowing me down i see it as a tool that i now use to better the rest of my life so yeah. i personally think it resonates so well with black youth because you know we have a lot of as characters have a lot of say with what goes into our characters and the directors and producers, everybody works with us and the writers as far as so we can get the most authentic versions of the youth. Because a lot of the time you would see just certain creators of shows or movies just take over and kind of do their own thing, but they're actually getting our input. So we were making sure to put in every struggle we go through, every insecure thought, every problem, every obstacle, every, because kids go through a lot. A lot of people don't really be knowing. They be thinking, oh, it's a kid, you go ahead, get over it. You, we go through a lot on a daily basis. And I'm happy to say, I'm pretty sure we captured that in this season one. And hopefully y'all see that as in season two as well. Yes, sir, I'm gonna be there. First thing I'm looking forward to, New York is my city. I love New York. Uh, that's been, I've always been a big city 
kind of guy and that's something I'm very looking forward to and also seeing all of my castmates under one roof because you know not all of us are in the same say so we got people from Australia we got people from Canada we got people from all over the world so it's going to be cool really seeing us all there gadged out for our second season and we can't wait for everybody to see it. Royale, the one thing I will say, and this is the only thing I will say, that confidence is irradiating. You know, he was a little more shy, unsure of himself, moving a certain way season one because he wanted everybody to like him and be more involved and just be one of the guys and just want everybody to know his worth. But like, the one thing I will say, the confidence is irradiating for this young man and he's, he's on to bigger and better things. say so not in a so overly cocky sort of way but just a sense of confidence he knows his worth he knows what he can offer to the table he's more sure of himself he's not constantly running around to please other people he's over here just doing him and i guess we both do us so yeah a lot more projects under my belt. I am a workaholic. I love this industry. And I didn't think as far as acting, I would ever be here where I am now, let alone doing this at all. Cause I had no interest in it when I was younger. So to just be tripping and I'm here now, I'm working and I'm meeting all these people and I'm attaining all these goals. It's just amazing. And a couple things I would definitely love to do and dabble in is definitely up in Marvel. Let me let you know right now. Miles Morales, man, that's been a character that I've been obsessed with since I was a kid. I read his first comic book in about sixth or seventh grade when it first came out. And when I found out there's a black Spider-Man, a Spider-Man that looks like me. Stuck with him until the cartoons, up until this movie. And I'm hearing they're doing the live action, looking around now. And I just, you know, putting my two cents out there, letting them know, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Hey guys, it's OZ. Y'all can find me on social media, Instagram, Z-M-N-Y for real. Y'all can find me on TikTok, I am O-Z-I-E. Thank you so much for having me.